Last week, uh, I spoke to you guys about a couple of elements of our sonship. Uh, who can remember what we talked about? Okay, well, maybe I should just do that talk again. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I talked about a couple of things last week. The first um, is that in our sonship, as we come to the Father, we need to learn that we sit underneath a great weight of affection that he is a God that lavishes us with affection, and there's really nothing that we can do about it. We can ignore it, but there's nothing that we can do to stop it, and so our calling as sons and daughters is to sit down, sit under that affection, soak it up, drink it in, and just know that we're loved just because we're loved, just because we're loved. And then the second thing that I talked about is that as sons and daughters, if we are to mature in our sonship, we need to learn how to take correction from the Father whilst sitting under the weight of His affection. There is such a huge difference between condemnation, which is the lies that the enemy throws at us, and the sweet, sweet voice. And this was my encouragement last week. It's a sweet voice that comes from the Father through the Holy Spirit right into our hearts and he convicts us, and it's beautiful, and it's not a shaming thing, it's an empowering thing. We want to look more like Jesus, yes? Yeah, come on. So as we go on this road of sonship, we need to learn to sit under this great affection, and also how to let him raise us as our dad, correct us, instruct us, show us the way to go. Well, today I want to talk to you guys about becoming fathers and mothers, Becoming fathers and mothers. I have heard some criticism of the charismatic renewal and father heart movement. And the criticism sounds like this. Those guys, they just love to sit there and be loved, and that's all they do. <laughs> well, I'm going to suggest this morning that that is not the fulfillment of the Father Heart message. That's not the fulfillment of the Father Heart message. You see, when we are freed up as sons and daughters, when we are freed up from our shame, when we have the Father look us eyeball to eyeball and speak words of life and identity over us, in that place, we become truly free, and it is then our joy, our role, our honor, to lead others into that freedom. Our freedom is for a purpose. It's unto something. It's to bring others into freedom. And so this morning, I want to um, just open this up a bit. Us becoming fathers and mothers. You know, when Alice and I moved to Canada... Uh, we were offered to come and take over the worship team here and be worship pastors when Steve and Sandra said, so is this going to be Jonathan taking on the role or is this going to be Jonathan and Alice taking on the role? Alice gave a quick firm, uh, it's going to be Jonathan taking on the role. And I'll tell you what, I also had that kind of trepidation in my heart except that I was getting paid for it so I definitely had to do it. I am pleased to say that now that Alice is firmly doing it with me, she has been for the last few years, and she's doing an awesome job helping, uh, helping me in that. Come on. She is phenomenal. But when I arrived here, I felt deeply underqualified, and I felt deeply inexperienced. I'd led a group of five people in a small group, but that was the extent of my leadership experience suddenly being thrown onto a pastoral team and told to take over a community of people and to run with it, it was a little daunting. Hello? It's a little daunting. Probably you've had some experiences where God throws something in your way and it's like, gulp. I'm not sure, God, if I'm actually qualified, if I can do that, if I've got what it takes. And I'd had so many prophetic words. Jonathan, you just carry the heart of the Father. Jonathan, you just, you just carry the heart of the Father. You're just going to be, you're going to be like a father in this generation. And how many of you know when someone prophesies something like that, it's just really wonderful. Just 
just massages you, and it's like, hmm, oh, thank you. I receive that. I receive that. I, uh, I am probably, aren't I? Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That feels great on a Sunday, but then on the Monday when you're sitting down, what shall I do? And there's people to be talked to and like people's lives that you need to jump into, it suddenly feels a little more daunting. I don't know if I can, God. I don't know how to do this. I don't know. I really don't feel qualified. And most of these people are older than me. And yet the father says that the fathering has nothing to do with age. It's about a posture of the heart. And his encouragement to me was, Jonathan, just get in there with people. Love and encourage them. That's what fathering and mothering is all about. And in our worship team now, we're starting to use the language, talking with our whole team. Guys, take the posture of fathers and mothers where you grab other people, bring them into your sphere, love on them, not in a possessive way, but in a blessing and empowering kind of way. We need fathers and mothers. Now, fathering and mothering gets a lot of talk in church, but I feel like the practicals sometimes um, aren't talked about as much. So I know it gets referenced, but I want to discuss it this morning. Being fathers and mothers is part of God's design. How many fathers and mothers are in the room? Biological fathers and mothers? Fantastic, awesome. How many of you are excited to become fathers and mothers? Very nice. This is part of God's design for us. It's a natural part of God's design. And I want to acknowledge and appreciate that for some of us in this room, you haven't been able to have biological children or haven't been able to yet. And that can be quite painful. But it's still in God's heart for you to be a father or a mother. There is input to be had in this body of Christ. We're designed to be fathers and mothers. You see, we go on this journey. We go on this journey on our spiritual walk. Number one is we, we realize that God is a father. Wow, well, that's a revelation in itself. If that is very confusing to you, please see me after the service. I've got some very good news for you. And as we know him, that he's a father, there's this theoretical knowledge. Well, I, 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 uh, I guess I believe that he loves me. If he's my father, then I guess I believe he loves me. Step two on our journey is when we receive that love, right? It's when we receive that love. We're like, okay, we're going to go from theoretical to practical. I'm going to take you at your word, God, and I'm going to believe the words you've spoken of me, that you are, in fact, a good father. And I'm going to sit under this affection, we receive it. But there is a further step for us to go in this journey of sonship. Because in this church community that we're a part of, you know, families are the backbone of community. Families are the backbone of community. They hold things together. And the stabilizing force in a family is the father and the mother. We are called to become fathers and mothers in our community. We're called to become fathers and mothers for this church right here because there are people around you that need to be loved and nurtured. I also need to be loved and nurtured, so any encouragement is very welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Dallas. But Toronto needs fathering and mothering. Desperately. Canada needs fathering and mothering. Desperately. And there is a good news that we are bringing this world into. You see, the message of the Father means that we're loved. And, and I just want that peace on earth. I really do. That is a heart cry for me. I have a heart cry that my son Arthur, our son Arthur, is going to be raised and he's not going to experience trauma at the hands of Alice and I. That's a deep desire, and that we're going to create an environment, we're going to put him around people who are going to speak blessing and life into him, right? And I want that for every child. I know that's the heart of the Father, that we all get raised and brought up in a culture of safety, of peace, of life. We carry good news. You carry good, good news that Toronto desperately needs. 
We have such a need for fathers and mothers. I have a heavenly father. He's called God. I also have an earthly father. He's called Tim. Hi, Dad, if you're watching. He lives in England. He's an amazing dad. I also have a whole bunch of guys in my life that reveal to me the heart of the father. They act as father types in my life for a number of reasons. It's not because of age. It's because of the love that they show, the input that they have in my life, the wisdom that they share with me, the life experience that they share with me, the kindness that they show me, and their intentional investment into me. I'm so grateful for them, and I believe that we as a community of believers need to step up and make sure that we are doing it as well. Because that is our calling as sons, is to become fathers and mothers, ladies. I want to give a small caution. As we think about this fathering and mothering, we do not replace earthly parents, number one. Two, our developing as fathers is not a possessive way of having disciples, okay? And number three, we never become middlemen between people and God. Okay, let me break that down. Earthly parents are God-given. Thank God for earthly parents. Who loves their earthly parents? Come on. Well, that's good news. That's really good. Earthly uh, parents and um, children relationships are beautiful. They are complex. Sometimes they are easy. Sometimes they are difficult. If, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you have a difficult relationship with your uh, parents, especially if they're sitting next to you. But we should pray for our relationship with our earthly parents. We should bless it because it's God's heart for it to flourish and thrive. And they have so much to pour into us. They're the very people that God chose to bring us into this world. Thank you, God, for my parents. So we never want to replace earthly parents. We never want to be possessive over people as disciples. Being possessive of people is absurd. It's just absurd. You don't own anyone. You get to love the ones that Jesus owns. Okay, I'll say no more about that. And as for coming between God and man, we never get in the way of someone's relationship with God. God made the way for us to talk with God. It's such good news. It's such good news. So when you're engaging with people, when they're telling you the things that are going on in their life, the decisions they're making in their life, talk to them and say, hey, what's God saying about that? Before I give you any input, what's God saying about that? Bless people's relationships with God. I want to just uh, go into uh, 1 Thessalonians. It's a letter Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica. I practiced saying that so I didn't stumble over it. You can applaud me for my great... uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians 2, uh, verses 7 to 12. Just as nursing mothers care for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. Your witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, how righteous, and how blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Boom, I love scripture. So, some practicals. I've kind of expounded, we need fathers and mothers in our community. We need the demonstration of the heart of the father among us. We need it. Please turn to your friend and say, I need it. Whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you, just take, me, take my word on this. So here are three practical challenges in seven minutes that are going to empower you to become fathers and mothers in your community. Well, thank you. You're very excited. This is excellent. Number one. Say number one. Care. You've just got to care. Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? 
Paul says that he showed care and comfort to the Thessalonians. So guys, be a safe place. Be a safe place. To be a safe place, you have to have an understanding that your words and your actions affect people. If you want to be an island, cool. This message is not for you. But if you want to show care, know that your words and your actions affect people. So think about them. Meet people in their needs of love. There's a test called the life languages. There are five love languages. Quality time, physical touch, acts of service, words of affirmation, and quality time. Did I say that twice? Gifts, gifts. Gifts isn't high for me. (laughs) Um, Also, there's a sixth one which they missed out, which is um, giving people food, which is which is my love language, in case anyone's wondering. (laughs) Meet people in the way that they need to be loved. Learn how people need to be loved. Okay? Uh, Meet felt needs. If you know people are going through stuff, meet their felt needs. Share meals with them. Serve them. Be in communion with them. Be family with them. Bless them at your table. Show kindness and bring comfort. When... I first moved to Canada. Uh, Alice and I were engaged when we moved to Canada. I moved a few weeks ahead of her. And uh, do you guys know Dave Bonnet, who works in the School of Ministry? Beautiful man. Such a nice man. Anyway, we moved here at the same time. And there's a couple who, in first service, sit on the second row here. We didn't have anywhere to live. They took us into their home until we found somewhere to live. They fed us. They included us in all their family activities. They... um, they just encouraged us, blessed us, welcomed, to Canada, welcomed us to Canada. And when we found an apartment, they went shopping and bought us a bunch of stuff to kit us out. It's not revolutionary, but it has a profound effect on people. I felt so cared for. And you know what? I felt warm to Canada because Canadians had welcomed me. Show care. Number two, encourage. Say encourage. Paul says to encourage, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Guys, sharing life shares hope. Sharing life together shares hope. We increasingly, as a society, are feeling isolated because all of us are like this all the time. Right? Social media and technology is drawing us into isolation increasingly. We have to fight against it. But guys, sharing Life together shares hope together because we feel like we, we understand that we're in it together. We're all in this together. Share life with each other. Celebrate successes with one another. When someone's doing great, celebrate their success. When someone has a fall, be with them in a disappointment. Be with them in a disappointment. Help them shake off that disappointment and move on. Make yourself available to people in their moments of pain. A few months ago, Alice and I had a family loss, and then uh, one of our friends from the UK, a girl in her 20s, died, um, and we were emotionally quite broken by both of those things. We have a good relationship with Steve and Sandra Long, and they meet with us every week, but they would look us in the eyes every single week and throughout the week as well, and they would ring us and they would text us and just pour in encouragement into us. Guys, how are you doing? You can do this. Have you prayed through this? Have you prayed through this? How's your heart feeling? It's hard, but I know you're going to get through this. I just want to give you hope. They just gave all of that stuff to us. For that, I am so thankful. Encourage Number one, care. Number two, encourage. Number three, reinforce identity. And this is the joy of parents, that you reinforce identity. It's the parents that give the children their identity. Arthur is called Arthur Zane Clark because I am a Clark. I give him identity. Right? Parents reproduce what they are. When we became pregnant, we didn't expect to have a kitten (laughs) delivered to us. We expected a baby boy, a human baby boy, in our likeness. And praise the Lord, he is in our likeness. (laughs) You're welcome, world. (laughs) Reinforce identity. Paul says to the Thessalonians, 
that he's urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. He's reminding them, this is what you're called to. This is who you are. This comes hand in hand with encouragement. Champion people's walk with God through the simple question, how is it going with God? What is God saying to you? Champion people's walk with God. Call out the greatness in people. Be aware of their prophetic destiny. And if you're not sure what it is, even if you do know what it is, ask God for yourself. God, what are you saying over this person's life that I can be in agreement with and stand with you in believing for them? Call out the greatness in them. And then make the necessary space for growth. If it's in your power to give opportunity, give opportunity for growth. And just as good parents do, don't be afraid to give input. Don't be afraid to give input. There's a whole thing which is like, you can do your thing, I'll do my thing. That's not biblical for Christians. It's not biblical for Christians. Paul says very clearly in his writing, for the outside world, I do not judge you. I do not judge you. He says to the people in the church, judge each other. Ooh. Well, that's a fun one. Everyone's really cheering at that one. But it's not judging each other out of a spirit of competition, out of criticalness. It's holding each other accountable to the glory to which God has called us. If I see something in your life, I'm like, it doesn't look glorious and like Jesus, and it doesn't look like the way that your life, I know you want it to be going. Then I'm going to say, hey, what about this? This week, um, Kathy Harris, who is a director in our school of ministry, was like, hey, Jonathan, what about this in your life? There's this thing going on. Are you sure about this? And I was like, great question. I'll think about it. But thank you for giving input into my life. We should not be afraid of input. But make sure it comes in love. Did you hear me? Make sure it comes in love. Not just awkward love, but loving love that comes with affirmation, smile, and kisses if appropriate. Okay, I'm nearly done. There are people who have gone out of their way to show me care, encouragement, and reinforce my identity. They've gone out of their way to jump into the path of my life, and for that I am incredibly grateful. We have to understand that to put someone else's needs above our own, we have to get a little uncomfortable. Because to jump into someone else's life is not natural feeling. We feel like we need a written permission slip. And in Canada, we have a wonderful sense of politeness. Dare I say, sometimes a little too polite. Don't get into my hula hoop. I like to have my house. I'm gonna work hard, pay off my mortgage, have my house, have my cottage, have everything the way I want it set up, and then have the quiet life. Don't come into my hula hoop. We're called to get into each other's hula hoops as we walk as brothers and sisters. We're called to rub up against each other. Didn't make a noise, did it? We're called to rub up against each other, sharpen each other like iron sharpens iron. So guys, do not be shy. Be bold. Hmm. Be bold. Do not be shy. Be bold. I'm encouraging you, imploring you, let's look like Jesus who came to reveal the Father. Let's reveal the Father to each other. Let's reveal the Father to each other. Jump out of your comfort zone and reveal the Father to those around you. We're going to pray if that's okay. Let's jump to our feet. We're going to do a very, very, very simple ministry activation, okay? You guys up for it? You're going to ask Holy Spirit for one or two people. How many? Easy. For the ambitious ones among you, you're like, I'm going to do two, maybe three. For those of you that are feeling fearful of this, you're saying, I'll do one. That's okay. Ask Holy Spirit for one or two people that you can reveal the heart of the Father to. Does that sound doable? Come on. 
We're going to ask Holy Spirit right now. So however you need to hear from Holy Spirit, if you need to close your eyes, stand on your head, whatever you need to do. We believe God speaks to us. So if you get someone comes to mind, don't doubt it. God loves to speak to us. So Holy Spirit, come. Reveal to us those that you would love for us to reveal the heart of the Father to. We want to grow as fathers and mothers in the faith. So would you come and just reveal strategy to us, how practically we're going to love people. Okay, you've had a few seconds. Hopefully, Holy Spirit has brought one or two people to mind. Maybe three if you were very ambitious. Now we're going to pray that God would fill us with two things. One, he'd fill us with love. Because if we are not filled up with love, we've got nothing left to give. Okay? We love because he first loved us. So we're going to pray for love to fill us. And we're going to pray for wisdom to know how to do this tactfully, not weirdly, but just to show encouragement, care, and to reinforce people's identities in Christ. Okay? You're not going to pray just by yourself. You're going to grab enthusiastically someone next to you, groups of twos and threes. And I want you just to pray with them. Bless them this morning. Bless them that they would speak into the lives of those around them that they would bring the love of the Father, the heart of the Father, into their lives, into their situations, okay? Go for it. Take 30 seconds. Bless each other. Go for it.